Welcome to the all-new 2011 Allegro Breeze by Tiffin Motorhomes. This is just the right size motorhome for all who are just starting the RV life or for those who want to downsize. This DVD is meant to be a quick start video to help provide you with the knowledge to safely operate the motorhome. This DVD is not meant to replace the complete reading of your manuals. A complete set should be found in this carrying case. And they are so important to your continued enjoyment and understanding of how to use all components. Please be aware that you may see things in this DVD that do not appear on your breeze. We attempt to show all options in this presentation so options may appear that are not included on your unit. You may also notice an option being slightly different in size or color than yours. This could be a result of a change by a vendor or a change of vendors. Let's get started by unlocking and entering the front door. This is done with two keys, one for the regular lock and another for the deadbolt. Once in, have a seat in the driver's chair. Get comfortable in this chair using the six-way controls on the right side. When comfortable, adjust the mirrors so you have clear vision down both sides of the coach. The top portion is adjusted with this control, while the bottom must be set by someone on the outside. Now that we are properly seated and the mirrors adjusted, let's learn the controls on the left side panel. First is the HWH air leveling system. This system is exclusively used on the breeze and offers some unique features. Air leveling. Read and understand the entire operator's manual, including cautions before operating. These instructions are for quick references only. Air leveling will operate faster if the engine is running. First, set the park brake. Second, coach's transmission must be in the proper position for parking. Third, press air one time. Leveling system active light will then flash. The coach will level using the air suspension. Fourth, dim. Pulsating leveling system active light indicates leveling is complete. The system is now in the sleep mode. Fifth, turn ignition to off. The system will recheck level after 30 minutes. The leveling system active light will turn off five minutes after the ignition is turned off. The system will remain in the sleep mode. These are the dump and raise functions. The vehicle may drop or raise and or move forward or backward without warning, causing injury or death. The raise and dump buttons can be used at any time the network is active. The park brake does not have to be on if the ignition is in the on position and the park brake is off. The raise or dump buttons will latch in. The vehicle will raise or lower completely and stay in that position. The vehicle cannot return to ride height until the travel mode button or the cancel button is pushed or the dump and raise functions are provided for operator convenience for purposes such as dumping the air suspension when parked. Leave the engine running if the raise function is to be used. The park brake does not have to be set to use the dump or raise buttons. Height for travel. Vehicle exceeds 10 miles per hour, putting the system in the travel mode. One, place the transmission in the proper position for parking and set the park brake. The manual raise and lower buttons can only be used if the ignition is in the on or ACC position. Running the vehicle engine during leveling is recommended. This will provide a better air supply for leveling. The vehicle will level with the engine shut off. However, more time will be required for leveling. Important, if the ignition is on and the park brake is off, the dump and raise features will latch in and remain on. If the vehicle exceeds 10 miles per hour, dump or raise functions will automatically turn off and the system will return to the travel mode. If the park brake is set, the travel mode button must be pushed before the vehicle can return to the ride height. If the ignition is in the off position, the raise and dump buttons will not latch in. The vehicle will remain in the position it was when the button was released. The vehicle can return to ride height when the ignition is turned to on if the park brake is released or the travel mode button is pushed. Two. 
The vehicle can be leveled using the raise, the up arrow, and lower, the down arrow. Buttons on the right half of the panel in conjunction with the yellow level indicator lights. Any side to side leveling should be done if needed. Do not operate the vehicle for extended distances unless the air suspension is at the proper height for travel. The vehicle cannot return to the right hide unless the cancel button is pushed or the vehicle exceeds 10 miles per hour, putting the system in the travel mode. Next is the Allison Transmission Selector. The standard drive, neutral, and reverse can be selected. Always have your foot on the foot brake before selecting any gear. There are other options on the selector, including the mode button, which allows for the selection of the economy mode. Read the Allison Manual for more understanding of all these choices. This is the mirror control we discussed earlier and this is the mirror heat button which will remove snow and frost. This drink holder is the last item in this area. Now onto the dash starting left to right. This yellow handle is the air brake. Pull to set and push to disengage. Again, always have a foot on the foot brake when releasing or disengaging the air brake. The headlight controls are self-explanatory. This is a two-piece windshield washer switch. The button in the middle is the on-off and washer part. The outside ring controls the intermittent wipers. The button below is for the engine preheat. Use this only when temperatures are 30 degrees or less. This auxiliary start ties all the batteries together to start the engine should the engine batteries get too low. Last, here is the pedal up and down control which assures your leg comfort and added safety. The dash gauges are laid out to be easy to read and understand. Near the bottom of the center gauge is the message board. It will keep you informed of all warnings and other information. Moving to the right are the controls for the left and right side fans. These are handy for removing excess moisture on the inside of the windshield or just adding cooling. These control the solar and nighttime visors. Note that these visors will come down only part way with the ignition key in the on position. The key must be off for visors to come down all the way. This is your generator start and stop control. In colder weather, this start button must be held down to preheat the generator. The time varies but should not be more than one minute. Your generator will run all appliances in your coach and must be turned on in warm weather to allow the air conditioners to operate when not plugged into shore power. The generator runs on diesel, out of the same tank as your motor. If your tank gets to one eighth or less, the generator will shut off and will not restart. This is a safety feature to help keep you from running completely out of fuel. The generator is located in the front of the coach. This is where you check the water and where to check the oil. Last is the map light and the radio main switch which must be on for the radio to operate. Your dash console contains the backup monitor which also has audio so you can hear a helper that may be aiding you in the backup operation. It is always helpful to have assistance. This monitor also works with the directional signals to give you a clear vision of the driver's side of the coach when you turn the signal to the left to pass and on the right side when using the signal to the right to pull back in. This is a great safety feature. The images are coming from cameras mounted on the front cap. Next, the radio with many features covered in your radio manual. And last are the dash heat and air conditioning controls. On the floor, you will find the fire extinguisher. When entering the coach, you will find a panel on the left. It contains controls for the ceiling lights and the 12 volt system. If you are unable to get 12 volt power, make sure this button is in the on position. This should solve the problem. The porch light, door light, door awning, and patio awning extend and retract controls. Finally, the entrance step control. 
always make sure the step is extended when leaving the coach and stored underneath when traveling. To the right of the passenger seat is a map light. In the compartment near the windshield and above the dash is your master awning control. You will find settings that control at what wind speed you want the awning to retract itself. The awning will retract automatically at the wind speed you select only if it is turned off. To turn off, hold down the up and down buttons of the remote at the same time. On the other side of the optional windshield TV are controls for the local antenna as well as the TV booster, which is this green light. This control allows the rotating of the local antenna for a clearer picture. When watching TV with a local signal, make sure this light is on. Make sure it is off when watching cable TV. There are several options with the entertainment portion of this coach. The TV in the front room is standard and it comes with the local antenna. Other options are for a TV near the windshield and another option is a TV in the bedroom. Option number three would be the surround sound and the fourth would be a satellite system, which includes a wine guard dome on the top of your coach. The control for the wine guard system is simple. Push on and that should get you a picture. This can take a minute or two. You must have a clear vision of the Southwest to get a signal. Even when purchasing this option, you are still responsible for purchasing a satellite receiver and subscribing to a satellite delivery service. If you were to purchase the surround sound and the satellite service, both would be housed in a cabinet in the bedroom over the bed. If you have purchased the full entertainment option, here are the instructions for operating the system. Janet? Your entertainment system consists of an iPod docking station located in the surround sound system itself. This system also contains a CD DVD player, AM FM radio, and surround sound. Please note that the surround sound will not operate on the windshield TV if your coach is equipped with three inside TVs. It will work with the TV in the rear of the front room. Your satellite receiver box will go in this compartment where all the wiring is already provided. If you wish to receive satellite service, it's your responsibility to subscribe to the satellite service of your choice and provide a receiver. All of the TV-related operations are done with one remote. Three remotes are provided for your convenience, but any one will work any TV on the coach. Your remote may look slightly different than the one in the illustration, and some of the terminology on your screen may appear different. However, the explanations in this video will clearly show you all you need to know to receive clear TV signals. All remotes can be programmed into the main remote if you wish to do so. Please notice that the letters TV are shown on the bottoms of the TV remote to prevent you from confusing them with the DVD remote. Let's get started. Be sure to watch the TV screen after each button is pushed to see what action is occurring. For editing and setting channels, press the red power button to turn on the TV. Press the menu button. Use the down arrow, select setup, and then press OK. Use the down arrow, select antenna or cable, press OK. Arrow to auto program, press OK. Arrow to all channels and press OK. It will now program your local channels. If you select cable, it will program those channels, but this must be done in separate operations. This action will take a few minutes. When the screen says apply, press OK. This must be done to each TV whenever you move locations. If you wish to watch local channels, this green light located in the same compartment as your local antenna must be on. To watch cable channels, this light must be off. Once you have programmed the channels, you can now choose what you wish to watch. To do this, push input. This will take you to the choices of TV, satellite, or DVD. Remember, you're responsible for subscribing to a service and purchasing a satellite receiver before you can get satellite reception. For your satellite to be able to get a good picture, it must have a clear view of the Southwest. There's much more that you can use a system for, and these operations are covered in your Panasonic TV manual. Thanks, Janet. Moving on to the living room, there is a couch-table combination. 
the couch seats four comfortably. Once bedtime arrives, you can turn the whole thing into a bed by lowering the table and placing the cushions over it. Good night. Up above the refrigerator is your tank level panel. By pressing the various buttons, you get readings for the level of your freshwater tank, holding tank, gray tank, and LPG tank. You can also check the voltage output of the batteries. Also in this area is the slide control. This slide is new this year and is called a wall mount slide. It operates on a unique looking track. Always keep this track clean. The slide is powered by two motors, one on each side near the top. Below the refrigerator are your electrical breakers and fuses. These are marked, so get acquainted with each one and what they're for. Inside the refrigerator is your ice maker. To ensure its operation, look inside the ice maker and make sure the arm that controls the ice making is in the down position. Next, go outside and find the small door directly behind the refrigerator. Open and make certain the water valve to the ice maker is turned on. This should now produce plenty of ice when water is available to the ice maker. Across from this is a two burner cooktop and sink. The faucet in this sink is totally different from any others in how it operates. Be sure that before it is folded back and the cover put in place that the faucet is turned off. To ensure no water is running while traveling, always turn off the water pump. On the splash area of the countertops, you will find plug-ins that look like this. These are called GFI plug-ins and they are found in areas where water is present. If you cannot get power from these, look for one like this. Normally, these are located in the bathroom. Push the red button back in if extended, and power should be available again. Up above is the convection microwave oven. This does it all from browning meat to baking cakes. In the ceiling is a fantastic fan. It can change the air inside the coach in three minutes or less. Great for exhaust purposes. The controls for the fan are located within the fan opening itself. In the hallway is the thermostat, which is very much like the one you have at home and is easy to operate. It controls both the heating and air conditioning. If you have purchased the second air conditioning option, another remote will be found in the bedroom that controls only that unit. There are also four light switches and a water pump on-off switch. In the bath area is the shower, commode, a light control, and another water pump on-off switch, plus an additional GFI plug. In the bedroom, there is storage built into these drawers. These are closets on each side of the bed, and overhead is where the optional entertainment center would go if the coach is so equipped. That does it for the inside of the breeze, so let's go outside and see what's out there. The front of your coach may be covered with an optional protective film known as Diamond Shield. There are directions for the care of this product in your manuals. This will be a single sheet and among other things it will instruct you to remove bugs and other debris in six to eight hours of their accumulation. You will also find a single sheet of instructions regarding the cleaning of the coach. These include the use of good quality automotive soap and a soft fabric type washing head. Do not use a brush. Now to the cargo compartments, starting on the passenger side behind the door. In number one is storage and a converter. This charges your batteries when plugged in or when the generator is running. There are also inverters, which convert 110 power for your TVs and entertainment system. Each one has an on-off switch. You will also find 12 volt and 110 plug-ins plus a cable TV hookup. Number two has the optional central vac collection point. Three has access to the water pump and filter. Four houses a compressor. To get air from the compressor will require the purchase of an air hose and you must have the engine running to produce air. Compartment 5 has the house batteries and parts of the electrical system, plus a battery shutoff. 
You should use this to shut off all power when storing your coach. In the rear is your diesel engine. There are several filters that need changing at different intervals. They are all important and you need to study the engine manual closely to make sure the changes are made at correct times. You should always check the engine oil before each and every trip. Now for the compartments on the driver's side, starting with the door under the driver's window. In here is a group of fuses which are labeled. Look these over to learn which does what if problems ever occur. In number two is the propane tank. This supplies fuel for the hot water heater, furnace, and cooktop. Always shut the tank off while filling or putting into storage. Next is storage and controls for the operation of the slide. It is not recommended that you attempt to adjust anything without reading the manual and then calling Tiffin Service at 256-356-0261. This compartment has the city water hookup. To get city water, you must supply your own hose. A white or tan one is advised as they do not leave a rubber taste in the water. Attach one end to the water inlet and the other end to the park's faucet. To have water while on the road, you must fill your fresh water tank. Do this by moving this lever to the tank fill position. Fill the tank to the desired level and then move the lever back to the city water position. To have running water in the coach while traveling, you will need to turn on the water pump. You can check the fresh water tank level above the refrigerator. Now, let's go over how to use the sewage disposal. There are two tanks. One is the gray tank, which holds water from the shower and the kitchen and bath sinks. The other is the black tank, which holds sewage from the commode. It is recommended that you empty the black tank first and then the gray tank, which will flush out the hose. To get started, unscrew this portion of the bottom of the utilities floor. Then, after removing the safety cap, hook the hose to this discharge valve. Make sure the other end is firmly in place in the park's sewage receptacle and then pull open this valve. Once the black tank is empty, close the valve and open the gray tank until it is empty. This is your flush valve. Hook a hose different than your water hose here. Turn on full power and flush your black tank. You should let the water run at full power for 10 to 12 minutes to make sure the tank has been completely flushed. When finished, reverse all procedures before taking off. Your power cord is found in this compartment. Always make sure the power is off in the main power box before plugging in and likewise before unplugging the power cord. In the event that you find yourself in a park that only offers 30 amp service, you will find this adapter cord in one of the compartments. Plug the 50 amp into the 30 amp adapter and plug into the 30 amp receptacle. You will not be able to use as many appliances on 30 amp power as with 50 amps. Read your manual for more information. Also in this compartment is your electrical transfer box. In this last compartment is more storage. Well, that wraps up the quick start walkthrough. We certainly hope it helps you to enjoy your coach. Before takeoff, remember to check air pressure in all tires. The correct amount of pressure will be shown in the tire manual. We always recommend a walk around before leaving. Check for all doors being tightly closed. Slide completely in. Everything is unhooked and put away, and if all sides, top, and bottom are clear, take off to the next fun location. Thank you for your confidence in Tiffin Motorhomes. If ever your dealer is unable to repair anything on your coach, including bodywork, you're always welcome at the Tiffin Service Center in Red Bay, Alabama. It's always best to call ahead for an appointment. 256 356 0261. Everyone at Tiffin Motorhomes says thank you.